Good morning, dear colleagues. Welcome to the third and final day of uh, our plenary this week. Uh, it's a great, uh, with, it's with great happiness that uh, uh, I announce to you that we have a, a great program for today. Um, I will start this session by announcing that the results of the voting on the amendments to opinions are known. The document was sent to you by email and is published on the member's portal. The electronic voting on the final opinions starts now and will be open until 12 noon Brussels time. The single voting link, similarly to our procedure yesterday, is available on the member's portal inside a document that is called Voting Link for Final Opinions. For detailed step-by-step -step information on the voting procedure, please refer to the practical guide to remote voting for the Committee of Regions, which is also available on the members' portal. So, uh, it's 9.35 and we now start our debate on the recovery in the tourism, hotel and catering sector. Uh, a very important uh, debate, timely, uh, and of course of great interest for most of us uh, representing regions and cities of Europe. Dear Secretary of State, uh, dear Member of European Parliament, Monteiro, dear President of HOTREC, welcome to the European Committee of the Regions. Today's debate is taking place as Many regions, cities and villages all across Europe prepare to welcome tourists for the summer season. In normal times, tourism generates 10% of the EU's GDP and employs more than 23 million Europeans. Sanitary measures, closed borders, restrictions on the freedom of movement unfortunately brought the tourism and hospitality sector to its knees. And this is the truth. Local and regional governments are already feeling the impact of the loss of income from tourism and hospitality. At a time when our public services are already stretched to the limit. Regions and cities cannot afford to lose another season. All levels from EU to national to regional and local, must work together to save the sector. Dear colleagues, in these challenging times, the European Union has come to the rescue. Cohesion policy has supported tourism with 10 billion euros invested over the past seven years. And during this health crisis, many European SMEs have been supported by temporary EU COVID-19 measures. But the most effective financial EU tool will be the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which must be planned and implemented between the national, regional and local levels. Local and regional authorities have competences on tourism. If they are ignored, the sector will fail. But if we work together, we can build a resilient tourism sector that will go digital and will become sustainable. Dear colleagues, Europeans want and are ready to travel safely. We all need to help the vaccination campaigns. There is no doubt about this. Vaccinating protects ourselves and others. But it is how we will relaunch and reopen Europe. And as I said before, there is no place for vaccine nationalism. The European Union must leave no region, city or territory behind. It must show its true solidarity and values, ensuring a temporary waiver on patents of COVID-19 vaccines, increasing vaccine protection to help every community in the world. Furthermore, the Digital Green Certificate will get Europe moving again, provided it respects EU privacy and data protection. 
Europe's tourism sector will not recover if we don't have common European rules for safe travel. European tourism operators will also benefit if we have standardized rules. So we clearly state in our resolution that we welcome the European Commission's proposal to create the new Digital Green Certificate. We call on a dedicated Directorate General for Tourism. We call to draw up a new European Sustainable Tourism Framework aligned with the European Green Deal and the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations. Tourism is part of our European way of life. It contributes to our common European identity. So let's work together, dear colleagues, dear friends, for its recovery and for safely reopening the sector. This will help all of us benefit. And regions, cities, the countries of the European Union will definitely profit and gain the most out of the possibilities that tourism gives to every country, every city and region. From the local economy, to new workplaces, to development. So we are here today to discuss these issues on how to reopen tourism safely the quickest possible. I welcome all of our guests, Rita Marques, the Secretary of State for Tourism uh, in Portugal, Jens Zimmer Christensen, the President of the Hotrick Association, and of course a statement by the Member of European Parliament, Claudia Monteiro de Anguiar. But we are starting now with a video message by Elizabeth Köstinger, the Federal Minister of Agriculture, Regions and Tourism of Austria. Societies and economies, in particular our regions. As we know, the tourism sector is responsible for more than 10% of European Union's GDP and of some 12% of European total employment. The pandemic has hit tourism and our economies like a hurricane. Those regions with a high tourism intensity have therefore suffered the most and consequently need to redouble efforts to rebuild a resilient and sustainable tourism sector. As Minister responsible for both tourism and regions, I am well aware of the independence of tourism and regional development, and we have therefore created strong linkages between these two policy areas. For example, in promoting regional products from the gastronomy. So how do we overcome the current crisis? In the short term, we have to create the conditions to enable secure and safe tourism during the upcoming summer season. As you know, Austria has been strongly pushing for a digital green certificate. We believe that it will be a viable tool to enable safe mobility and cross-border tourism. We also need to continue to support our tourism-related businesses and their employees in their rebuilding efforts until they can stand on their own feet. On the other hand, we need to set the stage for the medium and long-term development of the sector. This needs to be even more sustainable and more resilient than before and respond to the new and emerging trends and priorities. On the European level, we need to work together on the common tourism agenda. In Austria, we launched our national comeback process for tourism last week, where we held intensive discussions with industry stakeholders on the most pressing needs, challenges and opportunities for a restart of tourism. One of these discussions is dedicated to the role of tourism for the development of the regions. We will address the question on how to better integrate tourism into regional value chains, thus enhancing the role of tourism as a job and growth booster in the regions. The regions have an important part to play in the recovery process 
and the future design of tourism. Our objective is that tourism contributes to creating high quality living regions, not only for our guests, but also for the local population and businesses. Above all, restarting tourism will need joint cooperation and a positive and productive approach among the tourism community at large and all international, regional and local stakeholders. I therefore want to ask for your support in your efforts to restart tourism. It is highly appreciated because all together we can become strong again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I would like now to welcome the Secretary of State uh, for Tourism of uh, Portugal, Rita Marques. Uh, Secretary of State, thank you for accepting our invitation. We are really glad to have you in our plenary debate for this very important subject. Uh, so the floor is yours now. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me and see me well. So first of all, I would like to thank you so much for um, for having me. I would like to thank the, the Committee of Regions Presidency for the very kind invitation and to be part of um, on this plenary and uh, of course to have the opportunity to be present and also discuss what we have been doing in for the sector, for the tourism sector. Um, you know, we are living a critical moment. Um, this is the time to take decisive European actions towards the sector that gave so much to all of us. Um, we have now the chance to act without any delay in order to provide the necessary financial support to alleviate the, the, the lack of liquidity of many tourism businesses and to prevent massive loss, uh, losses in the, job, in the jobs. And, and to help the sector come out of this recession. And that's pretty much our biggest priority in the short term. So we all know that reopening of the sector depends on the epidemiological situation across Europe. We also know that the vaccination rollout pro process is evolving across Europe. Um, but we, we have uh, the chance to, 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 to give more to the sector. And so the Portuguese presidency uh, promoted on the on March the first uh, an extraordinary informal meeting of ministers of tourism, um, and that meeting was dedicated to a debate and to to foster the work together for the reopening of the EU spring summer tourism se se uh, season. On this meeting, we had the opportunity to have this great announcement from the Commission that he, it would adopt a legislative proposal on the digital green certificate to facilitate the, the free movement of travels within the EU. And, um, and so uh, we have been working very hard to have this ready by summer season. And, um, and at the same time, we also have been working very hard to extend this coordinated approach to uh, on travel restrictions, not only in the EU, but towards third countries, including, of course, the UK. So, honourable members of the committee, um, within the EU tourism sector, uh, while the EU tourism sector is currently facing serious challenges, the presidency did not lose the grip on promoting a rising future for the sector in order to maintain Europe as a leading destination in the world. The Portuguese presidency um, already resumed the debate on two of the three major key issues for the long-term strategy. Uh, on January, we held an event where we debated on how the EU can promote a better training and education on the tourism sector. We all know that seizing the opportunity of having a specific tourism cluster on the pack for skills is, um, is big. And we reach a common understanding that the skills are critical for this sector, not only for the workforce, but also on management and leadership levels. Also on March, uh, the presidency hosted another meeting, another important meeting, the Directors General for Tourism, dedicated to innovation and digital. And um, we had the, um, an expert event on big data management for tourism, where it was very clear that some work has still to be done in this area, 
namely by public authorities um, in the access to big data and how to make it available to, to the economic operators, special SMEs, but also for the regions, of course. Um, and now uh, the presidency is working with all parties involved, member states, the European Parliament, the Commission, the private sector stakeholders to promote and support the transition of the European tourism from a model focused on quantitative growth to a quality, quality based approach, leading to a more sustainable development um, in the sector and, and also um, more uh, jobs with quality. Um, the ambitious vision, uh, the ambitious vision will be part of the future European Agenda for Tourism 2030-2015 that has underpinned um, shared priorities, uh, that has a roadmap towards a sustainable, innovative, resilient, social tourism ecosystem where the regional approach will play for sure a, a very important role. This is one of the key objectives of the Council Conclusions on Tourism that we are currently negotiating and discussing with all member states to be adopted in, in late May. So the Presidency is very much committed to working with the, the all European institutions, including of course the Committee of Regions, and with all international organizations and tourism stakeholders on the development of this shared agenda a very, a very, uh, a very uh, ambitious agenda for the future of the sector. Again, we are very honoured that the President of the Committee of Regions has accepted to take part in the discussion that will take part in May the 14. Uh, this is the last event related with tourism uh, from the Portuguese Presidency. And this event will uh, help us to prepare the ground for launching the this agenda that I just mentioned and I would like very much to invite all the honorable members of this committee to attend uh, namely um, on the in the workshop of green and ter territory where the regions will have a special attention will have a specific workshop on this matter so thank you again for having me and um, I will be around to, to answer any questions that you might have thank you so much Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Marquez. The floor now to the member of the European Parliament, Claudia Monteiro de Aguilar. Muito bom dia a todos. Uh, cumprimentar o Sr. Presidente e agradecer o convite para estar aqui nesta vossa, neste vosso encontro, nesta vossa reunião, para debater um, um setor importantíssimo para a economia dos vários países da União mas um setor importantíssimo também uh, para a Europa. A Europa, uh, o primeiro destino turístico do mundo, recebeu o ano passado, em 2020, menos de 70% de turistas internacionais em relação ao ano anterior. Uh, aos dias de hoje sabemos que estão em risco entre 6 e 11 milhões de empregos. Quando falamos de turismo, falamos obviamente de, de um conjunto, uma cadeia de valor imensa, um conjunto de stakeholders que... que que trabalham direta e indiretamente uh, uh, para o turismo. Falamos de empresas de hotelaria, de restauração, uh, do pequeno comércio, de espaços culturais. Falamos de pequenas e médias empresas, mas acima de tudo estamos a falar de pessoas, estamos a falar de famílias. E nos últimos anos, uh, este setor foi efetivamente o que mais contribuiu para países como a Grécia, como Portugal, o meu, o meu país, como Espanha. Portanto, eu julgo que estamos no momento certo de uh, unir esforços, juntar esforços uh, entre todos, todas as instituições, para neste momento de crise apoiarmos claramente todas as regiões sem deixar nenhuma região para trás. Precisamos ter, obviamente, um olhar específico também para a outra periferia. Uh, sabemos que as ilhas têm constrangimentos específicos, nomeadamente da acessibilidade, têm economias mais, mais frágeis e, portanto, é nosso dever também olhar para estas regiões, para a outra periferia, consagrando também um apoio específico que nós temos vindo a pedir no Parlamento Europeu e que pedimos também que todas as instituições europeias se juntem, se unam para, efetivamente, darmos aqui o, o, o apoio necessário. 
a retoma da economia europeia, a retoma da economia dos Estados-membros, das nossas regiões, não se fará sem o turismo. E tem de haver a coragem política, a vontade política para lançar apoios financeiros, lançar um conjunto de um roadmap para apoiar do ponto de vista financeiro, mas também do ponto de vista da orientação, de como, como vamos fazer, como vão as regiões fazer esta dupla transição que se quer, uma transição uh, digital e uma transição ambiental, mas que precisa de ser apoiada. O, o Parlamento Europeu uh, aprovou uh, uh, há pouco tempo um relatório precisamente a chamar a atenção para um conjunto de medidas que devem ser uh, tidas em consideração, um caminho que deve ser uh, uh, traçado, trilhado, com a Comissão Europeia, com o Parlamento, com o Conselho, mas também com o Comitê das Regiões, com o Comitê Económico e Social. Todos somos precisos para uh, encontrarmos aqui uh, estas ferramentas de apoio. Obviamente que temos de tornar o processo de vacinação o mais célebre possível na União, esse é o fator crucial e chave neste momento, tratar da questão de saúde dos cidadãos europeus em primeiro lugar, mas depois há todo um conjunto de medidas que devemos pensar, uma estratégia que deve ser bem definida, sem uma linha de financiamento, sem apoio direto ao turismo no quadro financeiro plurianual, é o Next Generation EU, nomeadamente nos planos de recuperação de cada um dos 27, que têm de ser incluídos projetos para o turismo. A Comissão vai lançar agora em maio um, um, um projeto, um guia para o turismo, um overview 360 graus sobre todas as possibilidades de financiamento do setor, ou seja... Não existe um programa único como nós, Parlamento, queríamos, mas há um conjunto de possibilidades de financiamento que nós temos de fazer chegar aos Estados-membros e às regiões para que criem projetos para alavancar este, este setor. É pedido também que os Estados-membros analisem, se possível, a redução das taxas de IVA sobre os serviços de viagens e, e turismo, mas... Uh, há, um, há um conjunto de uh, medidas que a nível europeu podemos fazer. Por isso também no Parlamento Europeu pedimos que seja criada uma agência europeia para o turismo, que se uh, financie também questões de marcas, da marca uh, uh, Europa uh, uh, para o turismo, que se apoie, como foi dito aqui anteriormente, as novas uh, skills, a formação para que... Uh, todos os envolvidos no setor tenham esta formação e possam estar capacitados para o novo, a nova transformação digital que está a acontecer sem margem de dúvidas, mas também há de facto um conjunto de medidas que nós estamos preparados, queremos apoiar o setor e queremos olhar para as regiões dando-lhes um tratamento diferenciado, porque temos de tratar diferente aquilo que é diferente. O Parlamento Europeu está motivado e empenhado em fazer todo este apoio. Contamos com o Comitê das Regiões para, junto da Comissão Europeia, traçarmos melhores planos, melhores ferramentas para apoiar nesta recuperação económica que necessita ser feita já preferencialmente neste verão. Se o plano de vacinação correr bem em toda a União, estaremos preparados para apoiar viagens e turismo, a mobilidade dos cidadãos uh, europeus de forma segura e apoiando os Estados-membros e as nossas regiões. Thank you very much uh, for your intervention. Um, the floor now, and I want to welcome the president of uh, Hot Track Association, Jens Zimmer Christensen. Uh, the floor is yours, president. There seems to be a technical issue. So, uh, sorry. It was okay, please side. go ahead. Hello, President. Go ahead. Go we'll ahead. start all over. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. And dear President, ministers, uh, members of the European Parliament, 
members of the Committee of the Regions. Thank you for inviting Hutrek to speak today. Hutrek members are 45 national associations from 33 countries. Although tourism does not have a separate budget line in the EU, we try to be optimistic, uh, but also have to be realistic. As I speak, some businesses are in the reopening phase. However, many are still either closed, some by law, while others are operating on the brink of disaster. At Hotrek, we are particularly vigilant on the issue of level of deaths. As a consequence of the pandemic, many businesses are now operating with a negative equity, which limits or prevent bank credits that are crucial to secure startup and operating capital. European hospitality sector is a major contributor to the European economy, supporting millions of jobs in every part of the Union. As representatives of cities, rural areas and regions, you will appreciate that hospitality, apart from its economic contributions, play an important social role in the communities. The sector support a diverse and wide-ranging supply chain, including many small companies. On the positive side, the ongoing vaccination programs provide us with light at the end of the tunnel. The development of the coronavirus vaccines went historically fast and the relatively rapid rollout of vaccination programs already provide some protection. This said, our sector will also be affected by the pandemic in the coming years. Predictions suggest that we will not return to pre-COVID levels until 2023 or 2024. However, I am convinced that our sector will prevail. And what does it take? We do need support through the entire length of the crisis and beyond. From the beginning of the crisis, the European Union and the Member States have deployed massive support programs via the temporary framework or sure mechanisms. This still provides lifeline support to companies and workers. When the pandemic struck in 2020, the closing down quickly had devastating effects. Reopening will require coordination among countries and not the least at EU level. And let me stress that reopening is not the same as recovery. And recovery will be bounty and it will be local and regional before we can talk national. Rebuilding consumer confidence will be a major challenge and we welcome the ongoing work on the EU COVID-19 certificate. And we encourage and support the project as an important element in restoring confidence. We must work together to rebuild hospitality and tourism. The recovery package put forward by the EU provides a unique opportunity to rebuild the industry. We look forward to the implementation. The hospitality sector can also help to drive the green and digital transitions. The hospitality sector is already very active on sustainability, including reduction of food waste, reducing single plastic use, and tackling the sector carbon emissions, mainly by reducing energy and water consumption. We must also use the opportunity to change the way tourism is handled with a view to avoiding over-tourism and the fallouts from same. Also restoring and educating the workforce is a priority in the post-COVID period. And finally, we must create better regulation enabling businesses to recover. After 14 months of dealing with uncertainty, the sector is looking towards their respective governments for stability. We call for careful consideration on new regulation, allowing time for the sector to adapt to new dynamics and be careful not to slow down recovery. Our economic recovery will be, will be neither instant nor easy. The pandemic's impact has been seismic, but the experience can be an inspiration to create at future value. We can already now see some new concepts 
I here to stay as part of a new normal, but still people miss people. Honorable members of the Committee of the Regions, dear friends and colleagues, let me assure you of the Committee of Utrecht and its members to work with you. A better future for hospitality is a better future for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. Um, it is true that uh, uh, your voice is a very um, mature and, uh, and uh, specific in uh, asking for very, very uh, important things for uh, the support of the tourism sector. And uh, we can only support these ideas uh, as being part of the effort that we are all doing for reopening tourism. Uh, the floor now to the chair of the NAT uh, Commission, Ulrika Landergren. Thanks, Tsitsi uh, Kostas, and I will speak uh, some Swedish now. Mina damer och herrar, um, turismen är inte vilken bransch som helst. Det har vi precis hört av många. Det är en del av den europeiska livsstilen. Den, ger, ge, den gör oss nyfikna, öppna, toleranta och kunniga. Den bidrar till uh, vår europeiska identitet och känsla av tillhörighet. Den verkligen berikar oss. Turismen är också en viktig ekonomisk verksamhet som står för 10% av EUs BNP. Men bakom de här siffrorna döljer sig verkliga arbetsplatser för verkliga människor. Det är stora arbetsgivare för kvinnor. 58% av de anställda inom branschen är kvinnor. Och andelen ungdomar är också mycket högre inom turism än inom andra sektorer. För många av dem är ett sommarjobb på semesterortarna vid havet deras första arbetslivserfarenhet. Många kommer också att stanna kvar inom sektorn och arbeta för att någon av de oräkneliga små och medelstora företag eller att starta eget inom turistsektorn. För att hålla denna livskraftiga sektor vid liv måste vi börja resa igen. Vi har för redan förlorat två vårar, en sommar, en höst och en vinter. Ytterligare en förlorad säsong kommer att innebära slutet för många hotell, kaféer, båtuthyrare, nöjesparker, turistattraktioner. Ja, listan kan bli nästan hur lång som helst. För att vi ska kunna rädda den här sektorn måste vi vaccinera oss så snabbt som det bara är möjligt. Och nu ökar ju vaccinationsgraden i hela Europa. Vi måste hålla oss friska och återupptäcka glädjen i att resa, träffa människor och besöka nya platser. Mina kollegor i nattutskottet och jag har därför anslutit oss till att kampanjen I will do it. Och jag har redan vaccinerat mig. Vi vill bekämpa vaccinationsmotstånd och uppmuntra människor att vaccinera sig. Det handlar om solidaritet och ansvarstagande. Så jag uppmanar er, bästa kollegor, att följa vårt exempel. Att delta i kampanjen. Vaccinera er. Få era digitala gröna intyg och börja res igen. Och min sista uppmaning. Ta hand om er. Men var också smarta. Strunta. I de överfulla resmålen och upptäck Europas fantastiska natur- och landsbygdsområden. Efter att ha suttit hemma i alla dessa månader tycker jag att ni ska passa på att tillbringa semesterna utomhus. I bergen, på lokala gårdar, vid floder eller sjöar. Cykla, rid, vandra, paddla, kanot, segla. Ja, låt oss vända blad när det gäller massturism. Och se till att njuta av våra semestrar på ett hållbart sätt. Det är så vi gör Europa stort igen och låter turismen växa. Tack! Thank you very much. The floor now to the COR Rapporteur on Sustainable Tourism for EU Cities and Regions, Manuel Alejandro Cardenete Flores.
We cannot hear you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, they are members of the Committee of the Regions. I'm going to change to Spanish. Me gustaría recordar a los Estados miembros y a las instituciones de la Unión Europea la importancia de asignar recursos financieros suficientes para el sector y desarrollar una política turística europea a largo plazo con el fin de tener una industria turística sostenible y de calidad, basada en el respeto por el, cambio, por el medio ambiente y la lucha contra el cambio climático. Ha llegado el momento de actuar y centrarse en cómo mejorar los modelos actuales de turismo y también del transporte, asegurando que sean plenamente sostenibles desde la perspectiva social, económica y medioambiental. La crisis nos debe suscitar un debate que sentará las bases de la de resiliencia y sostenibilidad en los tiempos venideros de ambos sectores. Acogemos con satisfacción la rápida respuesta de la Unión Europea al rescate del turismo y el transporte, y en particular a la, a la comunicación de la Comisión Europea sobre Turismo y Transporte 2020 y más allá, así como las recomendaciones y directrices que la acompañaron. De hecho, nuestro propio dictamen hacia un turismo más sostenible para las ciudades y regiones de la Unión Europea, aprobada en el seno de la, del Comité de las Regiones el pasado mes de diciembre, así como también el dictamen de la eurodiputada Claudia Monteiro, quien ha hablado también anteriormente en este debate, estableciendo una estrategia para el turismo sostenible para la Unión Europea, inciden en cuestiones comunes, algunas de las cuales paso a comentar a continuación. En primer lugar, instamos a la Comisión y al Parlamento Europeo a que incluya en el próximo programa estadístico sistemas y herramientas de seguimiento que se adapten mejor a las necesidades específicas de las regiones y ciudades, permitiendo una trazabilidad adecuada de las políticas turísticas aplicadas. En segundo lugar, proponemos la elaboración de un nuevo marco europeo de turismo sostenible, alineado con el Pacto Verde y la Agenda 2030 de las Naciones Unidas, teniendo en cuenta las estrategias regionales pertinentes. Y, finalmente, pedimos a la Comisión Europea que estudie la posibilidad de crear una dirección general dedicada al turismo sostenible, algo que también he tenido el placer de escuchar de mi colega de Portugal, la señora Rita Rita Mayor. Y rogamos asimismo al Parlamento Europeo que piense en la creación de una comisión parlamentaria especial centrada en el turismo sostenible. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Muchas gracias. Um, dear colleagues, we now open our debate to the members of the European Committee of the Regions and we start uh, with uh, Nikola Dobroslavic uh, from the EPP for two minutes, please. Thank you, President. Dear colleagues, uh, I will speak in uh, Croatian. Tourism is in the whole European Union a important economic activity. It is even more important in Croatia because it is 15 to 20 percent of the GDP in tourism. In the Dubrovačko Neretvanskoj region, my region, that percentage is even higher, and the Dubrovnik je lani imao pad turističkog prometa veći od 80%, što je istinska gospodarska katastrofa. Hrvatska vlada dobro kontrolira pandemiju, spašava gospodarstvo mjerama za održanje zapošljavanja i za likvidnost tvrtki. Sad, kad, se, kad je dobava cijepiva ubrzana, nužno je organizirati ubrzano cijepljenje svuda a posebno u turističkim regijama. Također je nužno omogućiti slobodno kretanje građana u cijeloj Evropskoj uniji, zašto je potrebno utvrditi protokole što će koristiti i turizmu. Covid putovnica ili neki drugi sustav kojim se potvrđuje da je osoba cijepljena, da je preboljela Covid-19 ili da ima negativan PCR test je nužnost Potrebno je osigurati u svim zemljama poštivanje i provođenje utvrđenih protokola. Ove mjere pokrenut će oporavak turizma, ali su one općenito potrebne za građane Europske unije koji osjećaju psihičke posljedice pandemije i zatvaranja, a one se neće otkloniti bez slobodnog kretanja ljudi, bez putovanja i odmora. Dakle, ubrzano cijepljenje suda prihvatljivi protokoli za putovanja svuda i što prije. Hvala lijepa.
Thank you very much. The floor now to Donato Toma from the EPP for two minutes, please. Grazie. Mi sentite? Sì, sì. Ok. Mi esprimerò in italiano. Signor Presidente, signori ospiti, sono particolarmente lieto che questo dibattito avvenga all'indomani della riunione G20 dedicata proprio al turismo e sotto la presidenza italiana del foro internazionale che riunisce le principali economie del mondo. I leader mondiali hanno concordato che la ripresa del settore turistico giocherà un ruolo essenziale nella ripresa economica e economica e sociale dell'intera Unione Europea. Quando parliamo di turismo pensiamo soprattutto alla straordinaria diversità del nostro continente. Pensiamo al gigantesco indotto di piccole e medie imprese sul quale si reggono le economie e la tenuta sociale di interi territori. Al turismo è legata a filo doppio la salvaguardia del patrimonio artistico e architettonico, spesso e volentieri delegata alle autorità regionali e locali. Dal turismo dipende la tutela del paesaggio, della gastronomia, delle tradizioni locali che si reggono grazie a un settore che prima del Covid era in espansione e ora si trova in piena crisi per il secondo anno consecutivo. La mia regione, il Molise, ne è un esempio chiarissimo. Il nostro territorio è formato da un tessuto connettivo di piccoli centri e microimprese a gestione familiare che aspettano risposte certe e tempestive anche da parte del legislatore europeo e nel pieno rispetto del principio di sussidiarietà. Signor Presidente, signori ospiti, guardo con interesse e attento, attendo di comprendere appieno le implicazioni della proposta della Commissione per creare un certificato verde digitale che agevoli e renda sicura la libera circolazione all'interno dell'Unione Europea. Vogliamo che sia un'opportunità e non un ulteriore fardello per i cittadini. Concludo affermando che la crisi attuale ci pone di fronte alla sfida di ripensare al turismo del futuro in chiave più sostenibile e più attenta ai bisogni anche finanziari ed immediati dei cittadini e delle famiglie che attraverso il turismo con coraggio e creatività arricchiscono e valorizzano le nostre città e le nostre regioni. Grazie. Grazie mille. Is all there is now from the PES. For four minutes. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Wir haben eine Pandemie und dafür gibt es nun kein Drehbuch. Und das Gastgewerbe zählt mit zu den am stärksten von der Corona-Pandemie betroffenen Branchen. Gaststätten, Hotels, Restaurants mussten weitgehend schließen. Wir haben es gehört und die Umsätze des, der gesamten Branche sind dramatisch eingebrochen, auch in meinem Bundesland Saarland. Und das Gastgewerbe hat ja überwiegend kleinbetriebliche Strukturen. Da gibt es keine großen finanziellen Rücklagen. Trotz aller staatlichen Hilfen ist zu vermuten, dass nicht alle Betriebe überleben werden. Und wenn das Gastwirte ihre Betriebe verlieren, verlieren die Beschäftigten ihren Jobs. Da hat Frau Montero recht, es geht um Menschen. Und ich darf die Situation der Beschäftigten in den Fokus rücken. Auch ohne die Pandemie waren die Rahmenbedingungen für die Beschäftigten in der Tourismusbranche in der Regel als prekär einzustufen. Angesichts der geringen Betriebsgrößen sind betriebliche Mitbestimmungsstrukturen so gut wie unbekannt. Der überwiegende Teil der Beschäftigungsverhältnisse im Gastgewerbe ist dem Niedriglohnbereich zuzuordnen. Und das Durchschnittseinkommen der vergleichsweise wenigen Vollzeitbeschäftigten ist weniger als die Hälfte des Durchschnittseinkommens in Deutschland und in anderen europäischen Ländern. Sieht das nicht besser aus. Umso fataler ist es dann, wenn die Beschäftigten von diesem geringen Einkommen auch noch Abstriche machen müssen, wie zum Beispiel beim Kurzarbeitergeld bei uns. Zwar hat Kurzarbeit auch im Gastgewerbe Arbeitslosigkeit verhindert, da sich die Höhe des Kurzarbeitergeldes allerdings an der Höhe des ausgefallenen Nettoeinkommens orientiert, ist das für die Beschäftigten mit erheblichen Einkommenseinschnitten verbunden und wären die Lebenshaltungskosten aber in unveränderter Höhe weiter, weiterlaufen. Hier hätte dringend ein Mindestkurzarbeitergeld in Deutschland gezahlt werden müssen. Die Trinkgelder 
die die Beschäftigten normalerweise bekommen, werden beim Kurzarbeitergeld oder bei der Arbeitslosenunterstützung auch nicht berücksichtigt. Arbeitgeber machen sich da oft einen schlanken Fuß, indem sie sagen, das ist Gehaltsbestandteil und sparen damit Löhne ein. Und durchaus üblich ist es auch in der Branche, dass nicht alle Gehaltsbestandteile angemeldet werden, heißt versteuert werden. Und auch hier hat nicht nur bei Corona die Beschäftigte das Nachsehen. Ich sehe große Probleme auf das Gastgewerbe zukommen. Ich bin die Gewerkschafterin bei uns in Deutschland für dieses Gewerbe. Und schon jetzt kehren gerade viele Fachkräfte der Branche den Rücken und orientieren sich beruflich neu. Unter anderem aufgrund der geschilderten Prekarität und dem Gefühl, als besonders Abgehängte zu gelten. Weniger junge Menschen entscheiden sich, in diesen Beruf zu gehen. Und das ist schade. Man sollte meinen, dass es auch im Interesse der Arbeitgeber im Hotel- und Gaststättengewerbe liegt, die Arbeitsmitwirkungs- und Einkommensbedingungen ihres Bereiches an die gültigen Standards einer modernen Industriegesellschaft heranzuführen. Und Skeptiker, die meinen, dies gelänge nicht ohne massive staatlichen Eingriffe, den schließe ich mich an. Die Pandemie mit ihren Einschränkungen gerade für das Hotel- und Gaststättengewerbe führt uns drastisch vor Augen, wie wichtig sowohl für eine gelungene Freizeit als auch für das Wirtschaftsleben eine gut geführte und mit zufriedenen Beschäftigten gesegnete Gastronomie und Hotellerie ist. Wir alle vermissen dies. Herr Christensen, da haben Sie recht, es fehlt ein Stück Lebensqualität. Und deshalb ist es notwendig, schnell zu impfen und testen, testen, testen. Aber auch Kontrollen sind wichtig. Kontrollen der Restaurants, der Gaststätten, der Gäste zum Schutz der Beschäftigten und auch der Inhaber. Und wir brauchen endlich mehr Verlässlichkeit für alle. Nicht das ständige Hin und Her, das muss aufhören. Und das grüne Zertifikat könnte hier eine Lösung sein. Lasst uns Lehren aus der Krise ziehen. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. We now move to Miria Vercapera from Renew Europe for three minutes, please. Kiitos puheenjohtaja. Heräsin Suomessa aamulla lumisateeseen. Viisivuotias poikani kysyi, että milloin päästään lentokoneeseen ja Kanarian saarille? Vastausta on vaikea antaa. Matkakuume kun kasvaa kaikenikäisillä. Covid-pandemian vaikutukset matkailuun ovat Euroopassa mittavat, osin pysyvät. Matkailualan konkurssiaalto on vasta tulossa, jos pandemia vielä tästä pitkittyy. Tarvitsemme Euroopan tasoisia jäsenmaiden ja paikallistason päätöksiä, jotta matkailun palvelualat ja työpaikat pysyvät hengissä. Euroopan tasolla pandemiatilanne on saatava hallintaan, riittävä rokotekattavuus, rajoitusten purkamista hallitusti ja varautumista terveysturvalliseen matkailuun. Tarvitsemme rokotepassin tai vihreän passin, jolla voidaan todentaa matkailualan koronatilannetta. Jäsenmaiden tasolla yritysten taloudellinen tuki on välttämätöntä. Toivottavasti teidän jokaisen omassa maassa on maksettu yritystoiminnan keskeytymisestä yritystukea. Suomessa yritykset ovat voineet hakea myös kehittämistukea. Kehittämistuella pistetään paikkoja ja toimintaa kuntoon. Näitä toimenpiteitä ovat rakennusten kunnostukset, lämmitys- ja energiajärjestysten muutokset, markkinoinnin uudistukset, digitalisaation hyödyntäminen sekä henkilöstön koulutus. Nyt jos koskaan on satsattava paikalliseen matkailuun. Suomessa Lapin hiihtomatkailukeskukset ja mökit ovat olleet talvella täynnä, täysin kotimaan matkailijoiden ansiosta. Mökkibuumi, lähimatkailu ja etätyöskentely jatkuvat tästäkin eteenpäin. Meillä keskustellaan jo kaksoiskuntalaisuudesta, jossa jokaisen ma maks jokainen ma maksavat kuntaveronsa, ne jaettaisiin asuinkunnan ja vapaa-ajan kunnan välille. Paikallisesti olemme auttaneet matkailu- ja ravintola-alaa vuokrien joustoilla, 
tulevan kesän ulkoilu- ja terassilupien laajennuksilla kaupunki markkinoi paikallisia palveluita yritysten kanssa ja onpa mietitty kuntalaisille jaettavan palvelu- tai matkailusetelinkin jakoa. Ravintola-alalle koronarajoitukset ovat olleet todella julmat. On ollut pakko keksiä selviytymiskeinoja. Nyt tilataan kauppaostoksia suoraan kaupan kassalle tai kotiovelle. Ihmiset ovat, olleet, ovat käyttäneet tila, tilauspalveluita. Take away ruokaa myydään valtavasti. Uusia toimintamalleja tulee koko ajan lisää. Esimerkkinä ruokarekka, johon etukäteen tilataan ruokaannokset viikon tarpeisiin ja jaetaan ne sitten sovitun reitin alueelle. Odotan lähimatkailu kesää ja ma- mahdollisesti terveysturvallista matkailusyksyn alkua. Kiitos. Thank you very much. The floor now to Marco Malsilio from the ECR for two and a half minutes. Sì, buongiorno e grazie Presidente. Al fine di consentire nel più breve tempo possibile una ripresa del comparto turistico, riteniamo prioritario implementare protocolli sanitari in grado di conciliare la tutela della salute con le esigenze degli operatori turistici. Più questi protocolli saranno efficienti, maggiore sarà la fiducia dei turisti nella scelta delle destinazioni. Difficilmente i viaggiatori si recheranno in paesi dove il controllo degli accessi è mal gestito con un basso indice di vaccinazioni e con un'alta incidenza epidemiologica, ovvero in quei paesi dove sono imposti coprifuoco o quarantene. Alcuni trend emersi durante la pandemia si consolideranno nell'immediato futuro. Le destinazioni sostenibili caratterizzate da una bassa densità turistica saranno preferite rispetto alle località storicamente deputate al turismo di massa. Pertanto la programmazione turistica si dovrà concentrare anche sulla valorizzazione di questa naturale predisposizione delle nostre località interne e costiere. Come ECR abbiamo proposto di investire sullo screening, creando un database di tamponi che possa essere interrogato tramite QR code. Abbiamo individuato da subito come soluzione immediata quella di dotarsi di un certificato verde digitale, un Green Pass, sull'esempio di ciò che l'Organizzazione Internazionale delle Compagnie Aeree, la IATA, sta sperimentando attraverso un'applicazione per dispositivi mobili con la quale gestire test e vaccini effettuati. Ma questi certificati dovranno essere non discriminatori. Le persone che non possono essere vaccinate per motivi di salute, ad esempio, dovranno essere in grado di viaggiare e accedere ai servizi di base purché abbiano un test negativo effettuato recentemente. Inoltre, tali test dovrebbero essere facilmente accessibili per tutti. Solo in questo modo potremo evitare di perdere flussi turistici in favore di chi ha già comunicato di muoversi in questa direzione. Un primo passo che al pari di un'accelerazione della campagna vaccinale all'interno dell'Unione Europea necessita di essere supportato e implementato efficacemente per garantire parità di trattamento all'interno dell'Unione. Occorrerebbe infine intervenire per tutelare le imprese balneari fortemente penalizzate in paesi come l'Italia dalla direttiva EE sui servizi, la direttiva Borkestein. A tal riguardo mi permetto di sottolineare che è necessario ribadire con forza che le nostre spiagge sono beni e non servizi che non sussiste il presupposto della scarsità del bene e che ci sono validi motivi di interesse generale che consentono di escludere tale fondamentale settore dal campo di applicazione della direttiva in questione una volta per tutte. Grazie. Thank you very much, Maria Antoinette Maupetius from the EA Group for two minutes, please. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame la Ministre, Madame la Secrétaire d'État, Madame la députée, Monsieur le Président, la crise du Covid a montré l'importance du secteur touristique pour l'économie européenne. C'est lorsque les déplacements ont été perturbés qu'on nous avons tous compris euh, quelle était la valeur de cette industrie, son rôle moteur pour nos villes, nos régions et les effets néfastes que la pandémie pouvait avoir sur ce secteur et sur toutes les filières qui en dépendent, en amont comme en aval. En particulier, l'hébergement et la restauration représentent dans de nombreux territoires des centaines d'entreprises familiales parfois installées depuis plusieurs générations. Certains se sont considérablement endettés, d'autres ne rouvriront pas. Des propriétaires de bars, de restaurants ne peuvent pas reprendre leurs activités, même lorsque les fermetures administratives sont levées parce qu'ils n'ont pas de terrasse en plein air, ils ne peuvent pas appliquer la distanciation sociale. 
les saisonniers perdent leur emploi, les fournisseurs sont impactés. Mon territoire, la Corse, a payé un lourd tribut à la crise, non seulement parce que son PIB dépend à près d'un tiers du tourisme, mais aussi parce que c'est une île et qu'elle dépend totalement des transports extérieurs. Sur l'année 2020, la moitié de la recette touristique s'est évanouie. Près d'un milliard et demi d'euros, 15% du PIB, avec des effets dépressifs sur l'ensemble de l'économie. Dans le cadre du plan de relance Next Generation EU, nous avons obtenu une enveloppe globale d'environ 33 millions d'euros au titre de React EU que nous mobiliserons bien sûr pour aider nos entreprises à se relever, mais aussi pour renforcer notre stratégie de tourisme durable, un tourisme quatre saisons, pourvoyeur d'emplois, mieux réparti dans l'espace et dans le temps, plus résilient au choc. Nous avons signé aussi le 27 avril dernier une feuille de route de relance du tourisme avec notre État membre qui va dans ce sens. Ces soutiens sont importants, comme tout l'assouplissement des règles relatives aux aides d'État, mais ils sont loin d'être suffisants pour remettre le secteur sur pied et enclencher la véritable reprise. Ainsi, les aéroports et ports régionaux doivent aussi être soutenus, en particulier dans les îles européennes. Mais le plus urgent, le plus urgent, c'est de restaurer la confiance en sécurisant les destinations du point de vue sanitaire. Il faut renforcer la coordination au niveau européen, adopter des protocoles de santé et de sécurité communs et efficaces dans des délais très rapides. Nous comptons sur la présidence portugaise pour parvenir à une adoption rapide du règlement portant sur le certificat sanitaire numérique et à l'aube d'une nouvelle saison touristique estivale qui s'annonce compliquée, montrons aux professionnels du tourisme et aux citoyens que l'UE peut agir efficacement et rapidement. Merci, Monsieur si, le Président. Merci beaucoup. The floor to Satu Hapanen from the Greens for two minutes, please. Hyvää huomenta lumisesta Oulusta. Luontomatkailu, puhun siitä. Luontomatkailu on kasvava matkailun ala, sillä ihmiset ovat huomanneet luonnon merkityksen hyvinvoinnille. Ja ihmiset arvostavat ilmastoystävällistä matkailua. Matkailukohteissa on huomioitava luonnon monimuotoisuus, eikä matkailusta saa jäädä ilmasto. Päästöjä on siis kompensoitava ilmastopäästöt. Hyvä puheenjohtaja, matkailulla on monta funktiota. Ihmiset matkailevat tietysti saadakseen virkistystä, mutta entistä enemmän myös oppiakseen ja kouluttaakseen itseään. Esimerkiksi koulutusmatkailu on uusi matkailun ala. Eurooppalaisen identiteetin kannalta on tärkeää, että nuoret tapaavat toisiaan ja kiinnostuvat eri kielistä ja kulttuureista. Hyvä puheenjohtaja, kestävä matkailu on myös kilpailuvaltti Euroopalle ja myös matkailun pätee sosiaalinen oikeudenmukaisuus. On tärkeää, että turvaamme myös vähävaraisten perheiden mahdollisuuden päästä näkemään uusia maita, kulttuureita ja sillä tavalla rikastuttamaan omaa elämää. Kiitos vielä kaikille hyville alustajille erittäin mielenkiintoisesta alustuksesta ja hyvää kevään jatkoa. Kiitos. Thank you very, very much. Um, the floor now to Hanna Zdanowska for one minute, please. Hanna, we cannot hear you. There is no sound. Until we fix the problem, Juan Calabuig rule for one minute, please. Muchas gracias, presidente. Mire, la movilidad es esencial y para ello es imprescindible y urgente concluir el certificado digital verde europeo y llegar a un acuerdo de reciprocidad también en este tema con el Reino Unido, que tiene un impacto muy importante. El sistema de semáforo del que se está planteando debe aplicarse por regiones, dado que hay grandes diferencias dentro de los países. También el test de detección del COVID-19 para la movilidad de turistas dentro de la Unión debe ofrecerse de manera gratuita, evitando la discriminación de las personas por razones económicas. 
Finalmente, decir que la red de regiones europeas para un turismo sostenible y competitivo de la que formamos parte plantea la necesidad de contar con una agenda europea de turismo tal y como se ha planteado para la perspectiva 2050 en la que se contemple a este como un factor clave para lograr los objetivos del Pacto Verde y la Era Digital. Para esa transición será necesario ofrecer un programa de asistencia técnica y un marco financiero adecuado. Muchas gracias, presidente. Thank you very much. Dietmar Brokes, for one minute, please. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Es ist ja schon sehr deutlich äh, geworden, dass äh, der Tourismusbereich einer der her am härtesten betroffenen äh, Bereiche ist. Bei mir in Nordrhein-Westfalen reden wir von 50.000 äh, Betrieben im Hotel- und Gaststättenbereich. Und deshalb, glaube ich, ist es besonders wichtig, jetzt eine sichere Öffnungsperspektive mit pragmatischen und digitalen Unterstützungsmaßnahmen einzuläuten. Ich möchte dafür ähm, zwei Beispiele nennen. Zum einen haben wir äh, digitale Modellprojekte in den Kommunen, die ähm, bereits äh, einen Sieben-Tages-Inzidenzwert unter 100 haben. Dort werden ähm, äh, digitale Maßnahmen, digitale Werkzeuge äh, ausprobiert, um gerade auch wieder im Kultur- und Sportbereich zum Beispiel, aber eben auch in der Gastronomie, ähm, dort wieder sicher zu öffnen. Und wir haben ein Budget von 11 Millionen ähm, für sogenannte Digital-Coaches eingerichtet, um den betroffenen Betrieben zu helfen, äh, eben über die Digitalisierung für einen sicheren Tourismus zu sorgen. Vielen Dank. Thank you, sir. Sonia Ledl Rossmann, please, for one minute. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Und aufgrund der ganzen Wortmeldungen sind wir uns ja absolut einig, dass es dringend Maßnahmen braucht, dass sich unsere Tourismus-, Hotel- und Gastronomiebetriebe erholen können. Äh, einerseits müssen wir natürlich das Pandemiegeschehen weiter eindämmen, aber es ist auch wirklich sehr wichtig, dass wir einheitlich europäische Kriterien bei Grenzschließung und jetzt vor allem Grenzöffnungen haben. Und dafür sollte ausschlaggebend sein, eben nicht immer nur die Inzidenzzahl, sondern weitere Werte wie eben die Impfung, wie viel getestet wird oder auch die Hospitalisierungsquote berücksichtigt werden. Insbesondere für Grenzregionen wie auch mein Heimatbezirk Reute im Norden von Tirol, der sehr eng mit dem süddeutschen Raum verbunden ist, sind die Grenzschließungen wirklich hart für das tägliche Leben, für Familien, Betriebe, aber natürlich auch für den Hotel- und Gastronomiebereich. Denn in solchen Grenzregionen sind ja auch Kurzurlauber oder Tagesausflügler entscheidende Kunden, die schon seit langem wegfallen. Deswegen müssen wir wirklich alles tun, dass wir die Grenzen wieder öffnen können und sie vor allem auch offen halten können. Danke. Thank you very much, Piero Mauro Zanin, for one minute. Grazie, Mr. President, cari colleghi, cari e gentili ospiti. Io credo che il Comitato delle Regioni dovrebbe impegnarsi principalmente per far sì che i fondi del Recovery Fund promessi dall'Unione Europea siano indirizzati verso la ripresa, specialmente delle aree interne che si occupano di turismo, perché la ripartenza delle aree più importanti eh, sarà sicuramente più veloce, mentre le aree interne patiranno questa pandemia. E per fare questo, se penso al Friuli Venezia Giulia, eh, in una regione al nord-est dell'Italia, penso che necessariamente dovremo promuovere interventi che favoriscono il turismo lento e che mettano per esempio il Friuli Venezia Giulia in rete i siti UNESCO, i cinque siti UNESCO che abbiamo, eh, una delle regioni che ha il maggior numero di siti UNESCO per abitanti. E un'altra cosa essenziale è sostenere tutta la uh, rete enogastronomica che, eh, può, sostenere, che può sostenere l'impresa del turismo attraverso la promozione eh, di eh, aziende che producono bio prodotti biologici e a chilometro zero. Grazie, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Cesare Zibielski, for one minute, please. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry Państwu, Panie Przewodniczący, Koleżanki i Koledzy. Reprezentuję Dolny Śląsk, region, dla którego turystyka jest jednym z głównych filarów rozwoju. 
chcąc ratować tę branżę, uruchomiliśmy system finansowego wsparcia, który pozwolił przetrwać wielu przedsiębiorcom i uratować miejsca pracy. Prowadzimy też działania pozafinansowe, na przykład kampanie zachęcające do korzystania z walorów turystycznych regionu i specjalne serwisy internetowe promujące lokalne oferty. Teraz, gdy staramy się uruchomić powtórnie naszą gospodarkę, ważne jest współdziałanie, bo władze samorządowe, instytucje otoczenia biznesu i przedsiębiorców Przedsiębiorcy doskonale zdają sobie sprawę z poniesionych strat. Bezpieczne uruchomianie gospodarki musi uwzględniać zachowanie obowiązujących przepisów i reżimów sanitarnych. Znaleźliśmy się w nowej sytuacji, musimy wypracować nowe rozwiązania. Każdy z regionów ma swoje doświadczenia związane z kryzysem, a więc powinniśmy korzystać z wiedzy, z doświadczeń poszczególnych regionów. Wypracowujemy mechanizmy, które pozwolą zabezpieczyć się na przyszłość po to, aby ewentualna nowa fala pandemii lub inne zagrożenie nie sparaliżowało powtórnie naszej gospodarek. Naprawdę Thank nie you. możemy sobie na to pozwolić. Thank you. Dziękuję. Rastislav Turnka for one minute, please. Yep. Vážený pán hey. predseda, vážení rečníci, drahí kolegovia, uvedomujeme si, že aj keď sa život mnohých z nás zlepšuje, život malých a stredných podnikateľov bude ešte dlho iný. Ako región veríme, že si aj teraz zaslúžia našu pomoc. V Košickom kraji sme sa preto rozhodli podporiť mnohé projekty ekoturizmu. Žiadateľom o grant sme slúbili, že im poskytneme maximálnu súčinnosť a možnosť využiť naše odborné kapacity. Práve zodpovedné cestovanie do prírody a oblasti s kultúrnou tradíciou je potrebné veľmi výrazne podporovať a propagovať. Takéto spoznávanie vedie k ochrane prírodzeného rázu krajiny, k zachovaniu zvykov a pôvodného charakteru života v regiónoch a teda k ochrane našej európskej rozmanitosti. Napríklad, ako vieme, banskú čiznosť sa snažíme v Európe utlmiť a transformovať túto aktivitu na ekologickejšie formy priemyslu. Vážení kolegovia, Prajem nám, aby sa nám naše zámery podpory v regiónoch úspešne podarilo realizovať. Ďakujem za pozornosť. Thank you very much. Gustav Mare... Uh, Gustav... Sorry. Gustav Marek Žen, please. For one minute. Agnes Rampal for one minute. Bert Hegblom for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. I take this in Swedish so they can translate. Eh, jag representerar Åland och VNÖ mitt i Östersjön. Vi har 30 000 människor bor här. Och vi är enormt drabbade av den pandemin. Vi hade reser... 9,3 miljoner passagerare reste via Åland 2019. I fjol sjönk det till 2,4 miljoner. 25 procent av ålänningarna har varit sysselsatta inom turistnäringen. Och nu har vi st- arbetslösheten gått upp från 4 till 12 procent. Så det är mycket hög procent. Det är viktigt att vi nu, hela Europa, jobbar för det här. Jag tycker att man från EU och Portugal bör gå i spetsen för det. Gör ett turistår 2021 och 22. Vi börjar i mitten på detta år. Tack så mycket. Thank you very much. Uh, Ivan Alexiev, please. For one minute. Dobar, dobar den, uvjärmi kollegi i prijatelji. 
Радвам се, че се виждаме, независимо, че е онлайн и се надявам на есен наистина да се видим и в Брюксел. Но като кмет на община с туристически профил от България, изложените до този момент факти и проблеми въжат с пълна сила и за нас. За нашата община, община по море, намалял туристо поток, намалели приходи, загуба на работни места. И наистина следва да отбележим, че това е, може би, един от най-пострадалите сектори, като щетите под формата на загуби, отново ще се повторим, това е изключително важно, на работни места, на приходи за местните власти, на възможности за развитие, ще ни преследват още дълги години. А, ето защо, според мен, за съживяването на туризма ще са необходими не само много години, но и много милиарди евро. И сега е момента тези пари да бъдат планирани по начин, който да създаде истински зелен и устойчив продукт, който да отговаря на очакванията на бъдещите поколения. В тази връзка бих желал да изкажа пълната си подкрепа за участието на местните власти и администрации в изготвянето на плановете за възстановяване. Благодаря. Thank you. Hanna Zdanovska, please, for one minute. Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowni Państwo, mam nadzieję, że teraz wszyscy już mnie usłyszeli. Łódź jako trzecie największe miasto i świetnie położone postawiła na turystykę majs. W wyniku pandemii niestety obłożenie tych wydarzeń, które związane są z turystyką majs spadło o 77%, a międzynarodowych aż o 91%. Szacujemy, że turyści biznesowi zostawili minimum 50 milionów euro mniej niż w roku 2019. Dlatego branżę tą czeka drastyczne redukcje zatrudnienia. Apeluję w związku z czym do Komisji Europejskiej, żeby nie pomijać turystyki biznesowej przy projektowaniu programów pomocowych dla europejskiej branży turystycznej, bo jednak ta turystyka powoduje, że rozmawiamy ze sobą, wymieniamy się doświadczeniami i przede wszystkim możemy być takim faktycznie kołem napędowym do odbudowy zrównoważonej europejskiej gospodarki po pandemii. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you, Sari Rausio, for one minute, please. Dear Mr. President, dear everyone, uh, thank you for the, this very important uh, dis discussion. Uh, tourism has a lot of possibilities, and as always, the crisis is always all a possibility. Now we s certainly have a chance to change the tourism towards more sustainable system. We definitely need all the investments and everything that's been said here is very important. But at the same time, let's uh, combine this to our uh, European um, objectives towards more sustainable development. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you. You too. And finally, Agnes Rampal for one minute, please. Merci. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, oui allez-y. On vous entend pas maintenant. Voilà. Monsieur le Président, comme vous tous, nous constatons que le tourisme est, est essentiel à notre économie. Et dans le plan de relance que nous espérons de nos voeux, Nous avons besoin aussi d'une vision transfrontalière et une vision de voisinage coordonnée pour nos territoires. Dans Méditerranée, il y a 22 pays autour d'une petite mer et il faut impérativement que cette vision soit euh, généralisée et dans ce cadre, une stratégie macro-régionale serait extrêmement utile. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much uh, and thank to all of our members who participated in this uh, debate. I would like now to give the floor to our three guests for their final remarks and their reaction. And I will start with the Secretary of State for Tourism of Portugal, Rita Marquez, for three minutes, please. Is it working? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Go okay, ahead. perfect. <laughs> okay, so thank you again for your uh, very insightful inputs. Um, I, I, after uh, listening to you all, I have three main topics that I would like very much to address. First of all, it seems that we are very much concerned about the, the pandemic consequences in the tourist sector. 
but uh, this also this is also an opportunity to reinvent the sector and to um to see its potential as far as economic growth employment uh, social and environment sustainable development and uh, everything that's pretty much related to these topics so this crisis is really an opportunity for us to identify the tourism contribution towards the preservation and promotion of European values, our cultural heritage, and also the regional impact of it, of course. So I, I think this is the first message that I would like very much to, to, to convey to you. And second message is, uh, of course, we do know that um, quality education skills development here play an important role. So we think that tourism could really lead the way as far as young people, gender equality, lifelong learning processes. Uh, and this is really important now. We should encourage student and professional exchanges um, in order to improve the digital skills by tourism professionals at all levels. And again, because tourism is a very complex activity that has impact across several activities because tourism is a, a, an horizontal activity that depends and influences several sectors. I do believe that training and qualification of high skill um, professionals is, is really um, something that we should uh, pursue. Um, the third message and, uh, you know, and that we think this is important, we all know that we have this ambition to develop a sustainable, responsible, resilient social tourism policy and strategy. But we also know that uh, this strategy or this ambition depends on funding. And so it's very important to, uh, to, um, to invite the Commission to, um, to think about tourism in the long term. That's why I mentioned in the very beginning the need to have an agenda for 2030, 2015. But again, as for funding, as for funding, as, as funding is concerned, we, we do need to have uh, the correct or the adequate funding sources for tourism in order to um, to push for its high potential, its high impact in all the other sectors, and to continue to to give a huge contribution for the economic activity in Europe. Um, and so, um, at the end of the day, um, it, it seems that we do need a comprehensive uh, funding, uh, comprehensive funding sources for, for tourism, not only in the, the, the next uh, framework, uh, but also in the next generation EU, um, uh, as has been said before. Uh, a last note about the impact of all this. So, we should monitor the impact. And so that's why we have been advocating the need to have a tourism dashboard that could really be a tool for all tourism ecosystem, including, of course, the regions. And this tool could serve to help to, 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 to it could be used to, 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 to help to assess the, the strategies and the policies that all of us would like to implement and to determine future goals towards the development of tourism in a more social responsible um, uh, way as we all uh, aim at. So thank you again for this very nice invitation and uh, we'll do our best at the Portuguese presidency to, to, to pursue this, this, these goals for sure. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary of State, Ms. Marquez, for your participation and your very valuable input. I now give the floor to the Member of the European Parliament, Claudia Monteiro de Aguiar, for three minutes. Thank you. Mr. President, Mrs. de Aguiar is not connected anymore. Okay, which means that the floor now goes to the President of the Hotrick Association, Jens Zimmer Christensen, for three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, I have been listening with uh, interest uh, to the various remarks uh, today. Um, no doubt, uh, when you use the expression tourism, hospitality, uh, a certain part of the market is covered by uh, domestic national guests. Uh, this set, uh, international travel, cross-border travel, uh, is essential uh, for the sector to uh, uh, to survive. 
And when we do talk uh, hospitality and tourism, it also includes conferences, uh, meetings, trade fairs, culture, museums, concerts, uh, and so forth. Um, I have come to the conclusion that although certain temporary solutions uh, can further uh, uh, the tourism business, uh, in the end, uh, it will have to be vaccination and a certain kind of herd immunity, uh, which will have to save us in, in the long run. The worst things which can happen now is that, uh, that we have to close down again uh, because we, uh, we get a third or fourth wave uh, uh, over Europe. And uh, the fact that certain countries are advanced in, uh, in administering uh, vaccinations and are receiving a certain uh, immunity level, uh, it is good, of course, for the individual countries. But again, it is, not, it is not enough that we have one, three or four countries within the EU, not to speak about the world, uh, which are safe. Uh, it has to be the whole world, more or less, uh, which uh, we have to vaccinate. And of course, what I say here is easier said than done, uh, but that is also because we expect uh, 2021 this year uh, more or less uh, to be lost, unfortunately, uh, not the least uh, as far as hotels are concerned in the bigger cities. But as I've said in my introduction, uh, we remain optimistic and we will beat this and we will recover uh, for the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, to thank, first of all, uh, all of our guests who participated in this very interesting debate. Indeed, uh, we have discussed uh, this very important issue on tourism and how we will reopen tourism uh, in a safe manner, uh, the quickest possible, uh, because this sector is beneficial for the economies of most European countries and, of course, at the same time, uh, it's creating uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of jobs all across Europe. So, indeed, uh, especially for countries like mine, like Greece, tourism is the number one priority for now. Um, so, having said that, I want to thank again the Secretary, the State Secretary, uh, the Minister and uh, the Member of the European Parliament, as well as the President of Hotrek for being here today with us. And uh, I also want to thank each and every one of you, colleagues who have uh, followed and participated in this very important debate of uh, the third day of our plenary this week. We will now move to a break uh, and we will reconvene at 11.30 a.m in half an hour, Brussels time, uh, for the very, very interesting debate on the Conference on the Future of Europe, which starts on Sunday. So I will be looking forward uh, for this uh, interesting debate in half an hour from now. Thank you very much.